Welcome back guys. In today's lecture we're going to implement parser. Right, so we should be able to accept this program like this. Just two expressions, right, 42 and hello. Uh, and we're going to create the implicit block behind the scene. Okay, so here's our to-do. And by the end of today's lecture, uh, we're going to have our AST. So again, here's our implicit block, right? Please don't forget to wrap the program into the begin. And it should look like this. So let's create a directory, source parser. And we're going to use automated parser, as in previous lectures, using the syntax tool. And for this, we'll need to create a grammar, eva mpp grammar.bnf. And in general, this expression has two types of uh, basic values. These are atoms, they are the simple numbers, um, symbols and strings, and lists, which can encode uh, other sub-expressions. A list might be empty and contain any other expression, including nested list. So in parsers, we always have a lexical grammar, that is tokens, and syntactic grammar, that is BNF. Uh, the actual structure of the language. And let's start from the tokenizer, that is from the lexical grammar, and each grammar starts after the double percent sign. Now, first of all, let's skip the white spaces, right? If we met uh, any white spaces, we just skip it, that is, don't return any token type. The same we do for the comments, right? For the single line comment, slash slash, and for multi line comment. This is the regular expression for the multi line comment. So if the tokenizer meets any of these things, it doesn't return anything. That is, the tokens will be skipped. Now let's define the actual values. Uh, we have numbers. Let's use the simple numbers, slash d plus. Uh, as an assignment, please go ahead and implement uh, fraction points here. Uh, but for now, for simplicity, we use just uh, simple numbers. And this expression returns the number token type. Then we have strings. Here's the regular expression for strings. That is, in double quotes, we have any character but the double quote. Finally, we have symbols, that is variable names, and here's the accepted characters for the symbols. Sounds good, the lexical grammar is ready. Now let's talk about actual syntax. Again, we start the grammar with a double percent sign. And the top level expression, uh, as we said, either an atom or a list, right? These are two values. And now since we introduced the new names, atom and list, we should define them. Let's start from the atom. So atom is either a number and in this case, we return the numeric representation uh, of the number token, right? We want to have an actual number here, uh, but not the string for the number. So we apply the number converter. And for strings, we propagate as is. However, if we don't do any transformation, we can just omit uh, this handler. Syn syntax tool does this automatically. So we can remove it. And the same for the symbol. We just propagate the captured token as is. Sounds great. Now let's go down to list. Now, the list should be in between uh, parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we have the list entries. And that is space separated expressions. And as the list result, we return the actual list entries. Uh, let's go forward and define the list entries. Well, first of all, it might be an empty list, as we said, right? Let's start from it. If we don't have anything, uh, we just return as the result the empty array. This is the empty list. Otherwise, that should be recursive production, list entries, followed by expression. And substituting anything for this list entries, uh, we get expression, followed by expression, followed by expression, etc. Uh, and in this case, um, the list entries, that is the $1, should already be defined and be an allocated array. So we just push the expression to it and return the list entries. Okay, so the grammar is ready. Let's install the syntax tool. Right, and see the help. Uh, again, syntax is the parser agnostic language generator, right? It accepts the grammars and can generate a parser. As you can see, we can pass the output parameter. As the mode we use LALR is the most practical. And say the output is eva parser.js. Okay, perfect. Generated. And now we can normally require this module, right? The parser, and use it in our program. So that's pretty much it. Let's try it. And it works. As you can see, we correctly have two expression statements, and we may have as many expressions as we need. For example, we may have another block uh, with two strings, and it works. Uh, sounds great. Let's also implement today saving to the file, right? Our out.js, and for this, we just save the code to the file. Okay, let's try it. We see the same output, and as you can see, the out.js is generated. Uh, although, let's put it in the very top directory. And for this, let's start actually executing the generated file, right? Once we have it, we can pass it to Node.js and execute. Uh, for this, let's create a small command line script. 
right? Don't forget to make it executable. I change in mode plus X. And the first thing we do is run our compiler. That is our run.js, which produces the out file. Once it's compiled, we may normally execute the out.js. Uh, and let's put one extra line. Okay, now we can add, in addition to the AST and compile code, the actual result. And make a note that this is executed from our build system. Okay, I'm setting up the build system, so I can use it for my code editor. Let's try it. And there we go. Now, we don't see any output because we just have two uh, expression statements. There's no any uh, outputs to the console. So in the next lecture, we'll start talking about runtime and how we're going to use existing functions in JavaScript, such as console.log, etc. That's it for today. Thanks and see you in the class.